and uh, Posh also is an incumbent, though not out of the Harpers Ferry District. That's a bit of a complicated story. That's we probably don't story. get into as much. <laughs> and uh, Colonel Lene Johnson is with us as well. Good morning, Colonel, the representative of the Democratic Party. Good morning. How are you? Good to have you. Appreciate you coming in today. You'll each get an opening statement. I uh, ask that you can find that to about a minute or so, and then we'll reverse the order on the closing statements of similar length. In between, uh, former Berkeley County Commission President uh, Bill Stubblefield will ask you some questions, and also Steve Pearson, the editor of the Independent Observer, will also have a question or two for you as well. So we'll start with your opening statements, and uh, Colonel Lene Johnson will begin with you, please. Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lene Johnson, and I am running for county commissioner in the Harpers Ferry area. I'm a retired lieutenant colonel with 35 years of experience of working with the Army and Air Force. I bring extensive management experience to a complex organizations, leading teams, and solving problems at multiple levels. Through my career, I've learned the importance of teamwork, strategic planning, and collaboration, skills that I believe that are necessary in order to run a public office. I'm currently running on the platform of vision, inclusion, and collaboration with the goal of creating a very thriving and vibrant Jefferson County. My vision is to support the diversification of small business, um, foster tourism, and manage responsible growth. I believe in preserving the character of our county and embracing the benefits for all residents. As your commissioner, I will work diligently to research, listen, and collaborate with all stakeholders to find solutions that work for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And now the Republican Pasha Majdi. Good morning. My name is Pasha. I'm running for county commission. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a conservationist. I like hiking, enjoying nature. Um, you'll see me on weekends with my wife and kids. We have three little ones, 11, 6, and a baby, uh, going hiking Harper's Ferry where I live. I live in a, a national park, uh, a tourist attraction for West Virginia, one of the most beautiful parks in the world. And I enjoy the natural beauty of Jefferson County. In fact, that's why I moved here with my family six years ago. If you look at the front page of the paper uh, a couple issues ago, candidate profile uh, uh, for me talked about how I want to avoid Northern Virginia-like development in Jefferson County. That's why I'm running. I don't want to see Jefferson County turn into another Northern Virginia. Now, I grew up in Northern Virginia, just 45 minutes away from here, and I experienced that over decades. I grew up as a kid there, now I've got my own kids. And what I saw was a very slow degradation, a very slow uh, decrease in the quality of life, bit by bit, a little at a time, year after year, such that 30 years later, it just wasn't a great place to raise a family anymore. And I, that's really sad. I don't want that to happen to Jefferson County. We have a beautiful county. I want to keep Jefferson County beautiful. And I'm going to bring that perspective as a conservationist to the county commission to hot button issues like what's the future of solar? What's the future of housing? And that's the perspective I bring, because those are my values. Thank you. Mr. Pearson. OK, well, let's dive right into that topic then. In the context of zoning, you know, what are your um, thoughts on property rights? And we'll start with uh, Mr. Monty. I've heard a lot of discussion about what's the future for farmland. The first thing you have to understand is, you know, I've heard the term over and over and over again, what are we going to do with our farms? Folks, it's not our farms. The county doesn't own the farms. Individual property owners, farmers, own the farms. So the first thing you have to understand is we're providing opportunities for them to make their decisions on their land. If you don't understand that dynamic, it's not going to work. That's what zoning's for. I believe in pro providing more opportunities for farmers to do things other than industrial solar and housing. When you don't update your comprehensive plan, when you don't attract new types of businesses and get rid of regulations that are stopping those businesses from coming to Jefferson County, you limit the choices of farmers. And when they don't have those decisions to make, what are they going to do? They're going to sell to the highest bidder, a big time multinational developer who's going to come in, see a thousand acres and say, hmm, let me multiply that by four, 4,000 homes. Everybody in Jefferson County has seen this. 
Nobody likes it. But what are we actually going to do about it? That's why I support commercial development, changing our comprehensive plan for allow for different types of uses, and getting rid of some of these regulations and punitive taxes that don't allow businesses to come into this county and thrive. Ms. Johnson. In reference to zoning and farming, I also believe that farmers have that option of choosing what to do with their land, but I also believe that we should have an avenue of approach to provide them different options to use. Now, as far as um, zoning, I would like to be able to review some of the zoning ordinances that we have so that we can either change or alter what is becoming the angst of the community so that we can figure out how to better serve our entire community except for just one aspect of it. Mr. Stubblefield. Yeah, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. We've talked about a lot of subjects this morning, but one we have not talked about is the closing of North Jefferson Middle School. Do you have a position on whether the school should remain open or should be closed? Pasha? I don't. Uh, it's not a county commission issue. Um, that's a school board issue. The uh, interaction between the county commission and the school board is extremely important in one aspect, and I'll touch on that. That's impact fees. I'm a Republican who supports raising impact fees. I brought that forward on the county commission. The impact fee for schools is down to one dollar. Uh, I think everybody can, uh, I don't think anybody needs uh, a consultant to, to do the math on that. That's an unreasonable number. Uh, it's clearly unreasonable on its face. Uh, I support raising that to a reasonable number, funding our schools to the appropriate amount. I push that forward as a Republican because I'm not just about doing whatever the party says the platform is. My view is we need to do what's best for the county. And you're seeing that from all the candidates across the board, regardless of party affiliation. We should raise the impact fees and support our schools appropriately. I, you may, I'll come back in a second. Ms. Johnson, uh, even though it's not a county commission issue per se, do you have an opinion about whether the school should remain open or closed? My personal opinion is that the school should remain open because residents in that community are in a low-income area. And if you're looking at some of those people don't have cars to move around in. So if you're going to take away the schools, you're going to take away those children's opportunity or parents' opportunity to go to the school to assist. So if you're looking at... Um, children going to another school where the, 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 the classroom sizes currently are manageable for that school. So you're going to close the school. You're going to move the kids to another location. You're going to increase the, the classroom size to 15. Now it's going to be 30. How, that's not education for those kids. Plus, that particular school has a wonderful program for children with disabilities. And why take away that opportunity to manage that particular aspect in another school when that one's perfectly functioning, functioning and the parents really like it? So why close it? A quick follow-up, uh, Pasha. You mentioned uh, uh, the impact fees yes. have been reduced to one dollar, and you were a strong supporter of ad uh, adding more money from the schools from the impact fee. What there's a, there's a finite amount of money in the impact fees. Is there something you take money from, and where you take money from to add more money to the schools? I don't understand the point about there being a finite amount in the okay. impact fees. I think it comes in proportionally as growth comes into the county with each new development, each new housing development. So my perspective would be we need to increase the rate. Right now, for each new home, it's $1. It should be much higher than that to appropriately fund our schools. Fine, thank you. Mr. Pierce. Yeah, let's go back to the um, the zoning and, and, the, and the business growth and attracting you know businesses. I think you both are wanting to uh, attract you know commercial businesses uh, or commercial uh, growth. Um, in the comp plan, it talks about uh, looking and evaluating additional land uses, uh, particularly in the rural zone. Um, do you have specific land uses that you think the county should be including in its uh, in the zoning as it updates it over the next couple of years? And if so, should any of these new uses be allowed by right or principle, or should they all be conditional use? I'll start with uh, Ms. Johnson. I, I, 
I really don't have that much experience and knowledge, and I'm just currently reading the zoning regulations now. But I think that we should be allowing other light manufacturing to come into the area, um, such as bicycle manufacturing. Um, candle making, beverage production. There are all kinds of industries that we can bring into Jefferson County other than using it for. And being able to look at the zoning laws the way they have it now, I understand that there is a, um, an ability for that individual to be able to adjust that zoning regulations to support whatever we need to do. I understand that they do it to support what they want to currently do right now. I don't see why they can't change it. Uh, in my view, uh, this is the top issue for the county uh, moving forward. And I think when we look at our zoning and the types of land uses we want to attract, my platform is we want more wineries, breweries, and what's ter uh, the term of art is agro-tourism. So taking farmland and allowing uses that bring in tourists. My theme for my campaign is tourism. We need to have more tourism, not increased taxes. How do you do that? You allow for agro-tourism, wineries, breweries, and that would be the top priority for me. You asked the question, principal, um, or excuse me, uh, permitted use or conditional use. Um, I have uh, an answer for you may not have expected. I actually think most people don't care very much about permitted use versus conditional use. I think people care about high standards in our county, and in my opinion, it's more important, it's better to have very high standards for permitted uses uh, than it is to have low standards for conditional use. People want good outcomes, and the way you achieve that is writing good regulations, good zoning ordinances with feedback from the public in advance. I think a lot of the consternation in the county right now is that the public feedback on the solar tax amendment that was drafted is uh, not very good. Um, we're, we're getting that feedback right now from voters who are saying, hey folks, you didn't do a really good job. Now I joined the commission after the ordinance was written. And in my view, if you're on the county commission and you're hearing from the public, this ordinance doesn't meet our standard. It's incumbent upon you to initiate a review of that standard, that ordinance, and improve quality so all residents can enjoy a high quality of life. I've done that. The first thing I did on solar was revert the solar text amendment to the Planning Commission for a review. It's not working right now, it doesn't meet our standards, and we need to start over. Bill? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the ambulance issue over the last couple of years has been uh, received a lot of press, uh, both positive and negative. Do you think the ambulance issue was addressed uh, the best way it could have been done? Start again with you, Pasha. Well, um, I don't know. Uh, that's, could it have been done better? Uh, Probably, but now I'm playing Monday morning quarterback because uh, again these were these were decided. I wasn't in the room. I joined the commission afterward, and I um, I, I don't want to um, uh, criticize people who were doing some hard work and and perhaps came to some compromises at the time to which I was not privy. Um, what I'm hearing from folks is how are we going to fund this in the long term? Uh, and that's something I have been a part of. Uh, I'll tell you, I support raising the impact fees to help fund this. I do not support a new levy. So one of the um, sets of candidates who, who spoke earlier, one of the candidates, Karaki said earlier that I believe in commercial growth. Well, so do I. I'm a Republican, and I believe in commercial growth. I don't want to see tons of residential in Jefferson County overrunning our county so we become a new uh, version of Loudoun. I don't want to see that. I think we can uh, balance our tax base by growing commercial. That's how you get the money to fund emergency services, including ambulances. Um, I have heard, you know, I don't want to be Monday morning quarterback, but I, I have heard some criticism about the ability to build uh, consensus. I can promise you that uh, if I'm so fortunate as to be elected, I will listen. My ears are open. I host town hall meetings. I go door to door to, th to meet thousands of people. I give everybody my phone number, which I'll do later. And uh, I promise to listen to people and hear feedback and try and the best I can to build consensus. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, for the um, ambulance issue. I think the ambulance issue is something that the current county commission has just missed the mark on. We have, from what I understand, they just pretty much purchased a new ambulance service that's going to be run by the county commission. I think that that was a mistake and that we need to give that back to the areas that need to have the ambulance services because they don't have enough 
accurate response time to get to people that are up on the mountain who need the assistance. We need to be able to look at refunding for the ambulance services and police and EMS through increased funding through either the impact fees or be able to do some kind of um, additional revenue, whether it be grants, public, um, public safety bonds, or reallocating funds. We need to look at the recruiting and retention for each one of these areas also, because I understand that they have a lack of personnel. And we need to look and, and ensure that the people that are coming on board are people who are qualified to do those jobs. So yes, I still believe that, that the current county commission missed the mark and we are paying for ambulance fees, but the money is not going to the ambulance companies. May I respond? Sure. sure. The, the point was current raised, commission, uh, you have that right, yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, right, because it, right, thank you. So uh, the point was raised on uh, response times. Uh, when I first joined uh, the commission, I'm, I'm in the Charlestown seat due to a vacancy, but I live in Harpers Ferry. My friends and neighbors are on the mountain, and I heard relentlessly, hey, wh what about our ambulance service? What's going on? So the first question I raise is, can we have a study that shows how have response times been affected? The study showed that the response time has actually decreased uh, due to the shift in policy. But the problem still remains, and what I hear from my friends and neighbors on the mountain is, well, what happened to our station? We want to have a station there. And what some folks who don't live in that neighborhood don't know is that this, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny in a, in a dark kind of way, but the, the fire station there is not up to the fire code. Uh, so we got, we've got some problems, um, and that needs to be addressed. Uh, that's a long-term thing. Uh, that's not just a quick policy decision. Uh, it needs to be funded. It's expensive. Uh, it will take some time, but um, I have uh, some friends who are uh, running for county commission who are deeply familiar uh, with fire. Mike Mood is a fire chief. Um, I'll be listening to him on this issue. Thank you both. We move to closing statements now, and uh, I don't remember who went first on the opening statements. I did. Okay, so you get to go last on the closing. Thank you for bailing me out there. <laughs> Pasha, you go first. Thanks so much for having me. My name is Pasha. I'm running for county commission to represent Harpers Ferry, uh, my home. Um, I love living in Harpers Ferry. I've got three young kids. Uh, my wife and I will uh, go out hiking and enjoy our beautiful scenery, our tourist destination in Harpers Ferry. And I want to spread that joy across the county. Mm -hmm. Tourism should be the future of Jefferson County. Uh, is it going to be Rockwell? No. Is it going to be solar? No. It should be tourism. And the last thing I want to say is this. Uh, be wary of candidates all across the board who know how to say no to something but don't have a plan. You have to have a plan because without a plan, what's going to happen is you're just going to get housing development after housing development after housing development. That's the default. That's how you make a ton of money. So you have to have a plan. Here's my three-part plan for tourism. One, establish the Jefferson County tourism industry focusing on wineries and breweries within one year. This will give farmers an opportunity to do something with their land that isn't solar or housing. Two, fund our critical emergency services like police, fire, and ambulances with the new tourism revenue. And three, immediately begin, begin fixing or repealing our current ordinances like solar and housing that are bringing development at the wrong scale, at the wrong speed. This should be completed within two years. That's what I stand for. Vote Pasha November 5th. Thank you, Pasha Majdi. Colonel Lene Johnson. Thank you for the WRNR for having this particular forum today. Um, I am Lene Johnson and I am running for county commissioner in the Harpers Ferry area. I have 35 years of experience in running multi-level organizations. My background personally is in human resources and my platform is based on vision inclusion and collaboration. I want to make sure that everyone's voice is heard in the county and not just focus in on one particular area. We need to be able to cover and talk with and include everyone in what's going on. And I believe in small business growth, responsible tourism, sustainable businesses and development that will preserve the county and our natural resources there. Most importantly, I'm in, I am committed to ensuring that everyone's voice is heard. 
And as a county commissioner, I take pride in making sure that we thrive in Jefferson County, that we do smart investments and infrastructure in clean water, renewable energy, and broadband access. So together, we can work to make a vibrant community. My name is Lene Johnson, and I humbly ask for your support come November 5th. Thank you both very much. We appreciate your attendance at our forum and wish you best of luck on Election Day. Thank, Thank you. you.